right. Time to get started for today. So, this is the continuation of the Continental Divide ride that I started last year. Started up in on the Canadian border, made it through Montana, um, Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, well most of Colorado, but after about 10 days of riding I had to call it quits due to really really bad weather in Colorado and it was going to be four more days of rain in New Mexico and yeah I just couldn't do that anymore so uh, I went back home and now it's a year later today is Saturday the 30th or 31st one of those two and I'm here in Poncha Springs, Colorado. I drove out yesterday uh, from Northern Colorado and we're gonna pick up where, where I left off last time, right around Sargent's. So it's gonna be a quick ride over to Monarch Pass, over Monarch Pass, and we'll get started in Sargent's. to the bottom of Monarch Pass now um, and we're coming up right to the last piece of trail I rode of the CDT last year which is coming out right through that valley down down here that little road that ended up at the sergeant's gas station yeah you can see it right there uh, from there last year I went over to Gunnison spent the night looked at the weather took inventory of how many days I had left and how much pain my hands were in and you know I was just kind of in a, in a bad head space too. Uh, put too much pressure on myself as far as how many days to cover so at that point I just had to call it quits. I just didn't have enough time to finish uh, the CDT anyway and get back home and make it back to work on time so figured I saved the New Mexico portion for next year. Um, and. This year, uh, I'm gonna do the third trip different. Last year, I, I I was too aggressive with timelines, and it was just like looking at the miles and clicking down the miles and forcing through it. Um, I have just over two weeks off now, um, and my goal is to finish the CDT through New Mexico, which hopefully shouldn't take more than five, four, uh, five to six days, but. You know, I'm just gonna take my time. If it rains, I'm not gonna ride. If it's to find a nice camping spot, I'm just gonna stop. So I don't have any hotels pre-booked. I don't have any hard goals in mind. Let's just, let's just see how it goes. Kind of take it from there. Um, my assumption is that uh, I'll have enough time to uh, attach the Arizona BDR in the end to go back up to Utah and then back home but if I don't I don't so to see how it goes I'm excited I gotta it's been a it's been a bit of a rough year so I need to just turn everything off and just go riding spending a lot more time camping and enjoy the trail We've been on the road for about 35 miles from Poncha Springs now and the turnoff on trail is finally coming up here in Doilyville. This is somewhere between Sargent's and Gunnison. Um, like last year, uh, I'm going to try to follow Meerkat ADV's uh, route for the most part. 
and then supplement it with cannon shot as needed uh, depending on conditions and yeah whatever so I know I was just talking about how there are no set distances I'm gonna accomplish every single day but <laughs> I broke down the sections into logical pieces that I think is about a day's worth of riding so for today 187 miles now to um, a campground just outside of Antonio if I get there great if I don't oh well all right so as far as what has changed since last trip as far as my setup goes um, a few things uh, nothing to major one different headset went from the Cena which I always hated to Ocardo uh, pack talk I know it doesn't really matter here but for listening to music and everything it's just much better uh, plus you can take it off so you don't have to put the entire helmet in the tent to charge it up which is a huge plus um, GoPros uh, so this is the GoPro 11 mini I had that one on my helmet last year now it's front facing and uh, I had some issues with the full size 11 that I had up there and I replaced it with the 12 now on the helmet um, outside of that I got my drone fixed which is huge my luggage had a major change so I've been using the Moscow Reckless 80 for three four years now I had it on a few long trips the Red Rocks mountaintops trip Wyoming BDR the CDT uh, first part last year but I, I like it but it's always I've always had some issues with it um, one it's not super stable on the bike no matter what I try with the noblin and different things it's just is very it just doesn't fit well on the 701 uh, with minimalist racks or without racks I just never really got it set up right and then pulling out all the stuff out of the bags and putting it back in was always just a major pain in the ass I had some damage to it last year some of you guys might remember um, straps starting to break so when I got home I looked at it tried to think about ordering replacement parts and I just I just said screw it let's go with a different setup so I'm still a Moscow fan I think they make fantastic gear so I went with the backcountry 35 set <coughs> um, particularly the new uh, 2.5 version without any plastic buckles um, it's a little bit heavier it's a lot roomier um, so we'll see how it goes I haven't tried it out in the dirt yet I'm excited to give it a shot see how things go um, so it is a little heavier but I streamlined my gear to bring slightly less in weight and myself I dropped 50 pounds worth of body weight so hopefully that will offset it <laughs> but we'll see how it goes once we hit like some real trails oh and the other thing is I got the new double take mirrors the old ones the balls were always wearing out me having to replace them so this new set seems to be a lot better with those attachment pieces um, I've had them on a the trail a few times they work great so far <laughs> not this a little further up oh we're getting some tree track Wheat. All right, what does it say here? Open to motorcycles. All right, first trail type riding. Okay, some nice rough stuff now. I also have that big backcountry duffel on the back from Moscow instead of the smaller stinger that I had back there with the Reckless 80. And it's sitting pretty far back right now. And I think it kind of offsets the balance of the bike a little bit too much so 
maybe later I want to try to move a more closer towards me um, doesn't have to be that far back maybe that will help so the front feels super light and the rear just feels a little bogged down bunnies Honestly, this is a good place to just stop for a minute. <sighs> oh yeah, so here's the setup. Reckless, uh, not reckless, uh, backcountry 35s. And you see how far back the duffel is sitting. So, I'm thinking of moving it further this way. Yeah, that's probably for the best. Maybe not right now, but later. All right, let's see if the drone still works. Just got out of my jacket. Did not change any of the bags yet. Why did it just fall out of the sky? Okay, found the drone. Props seem okay. There's the battery. One of the props is damaged. Alright. Gonna have to do a little field repair. I tested out the drone in Moab and it was working fine. So, I'm not sure what's going on this time. Alright, let's do this again. Front, medium distance. Water.
Oh, okay. So this is the right trail. So the map is just showing it's a little bit straight. It's a nice little trail here. Some pretty steep sections earlier, but GoPro shut off because apparently it was getting too hot. back in the steepness again. <laughs> oh, that's nice and steep, but my front end is so light with the luggage. Oh, I'll definitely change that at some point. Don't want to wheelie up here the whole way. <laughs> oh. Beautiful little forest track. Oh, nice. Great view from up here. Looks like we're getting back on the main dirt road here. All right. Ah, oh, air feels great. 62 degrees. And a beautiful wide open road in front of me. What more do you need? I know you guys don't make smart decisions, so I want to take it real slow. Well, there you are. Look at that. Always reminds me of my two little English Bulldogs I have at home. The same level of stubbornness and critical decision-making skills. And looks. <laughs> a pretty little valley here.
Yes. Road machine ahead. Yep. One lane bridge. It's at least three lanes for motorcycles. That would be good fly fishing. Hmm. Nice, there is a tent campground. Right, let's see. And there's some pinches there. Okay. Just finished that lunch. Um, beautiful little uh, tent site down by the river. Um, I actually did take the rear uh, backcountry duffel off and moved it forward probably about five inches or so. Um, makes a huge difference. I didn't expect that. But the bike feels much better uh, balanced now. At least on this road, which even on these roads you can tell like the pendulum kind of feel to it earlier. Um, so I might not even have to move the other bags forward. So I'm pretty, pretty happy with this for now. And I mean, look at this view down here. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful day. Yeah, bike feels much better even when standing. See? Probably gonna get on some two tracks or something later, see how it feels. Wow! Oh man, look at this view. That's incredible. Yeah, that, that's all the fun passes here in the San Juans. California up there All right, so this is highway 149 If we go right it would probably be like 15 miles or so getting into Lake City to get gas um, I'm good for now, so I'm going to not take that gas stop it's gonna cost me like probably over 30 minutes altogether. So we're gonna continue towards uh, South Fork. Oh dear. High altitude deer, we're at 1140. Well, let's see. 11,500 feet elevation. <laughs> Pretty damn far up there. Slumgullion Summit. Nice. Honestly, this might be the highest point of the remaining journey. Maybe, probably. I can't think of anything else that would be high elevation like this.
coming up to Crete, Colorado. It's kind of nestled into this valley here in a gulch. That's a really cool location. Driving here through downtown Creed. What a cute little town. In search of a hardware store. I was told there would be one here. I think I need a number 8 or 8mm hex for the mirrors. So that's what I'm trying to find here. True value. There we go. Hardware store. So it turns out that was 15 minutes too late before the hardware store closed. <laughs> oh my dear, I'm not too worried about it. I'll figure out something else. But yeah, we'll see at the campsite. Maybe I can rig something together to tighten it. Not a big deal. South Fork. Okay, I know where we're at. I've driven through here before, just from the other direction. This one takes you directly to Pagosa Springs. Really cool place. Alright, we have a turn coming up goes further into the mountains. Let's see what kind of road it is. Looks like dirt, hell yeah. Nice. I thought we're done with dirt, but nope. About 60 miles left to the campground I thought I was gonna camp, so see how that goes. Should be very manageable, but now that they jinxed it, it's only 2 o'clock in the afternoon. But I do need to, I would have to run a little further towards Antonito, Colorado, um, just to get some gas. Uh, I'll be ready for tomorrow. Once we cross into New Mexico, gas is going to be a little harder to get. down a UTV. They're all over the place now.
I'm really looking forward to tomorrow, New Mexico. Never been riding out there. I mean, I visited New Mexico, sure, but never like been much out in the back country, especially on the bike. Um, I purposefully tried not to look at too much info on it, but I mean, I know it's gonna be Rocky Mountain type of riding for probably the first half and then transition into more desert, step, open prairie kind of riding, but I don't know, we'll see. I'm excited. like driving behind a dust machine. <laughs> Plus there seems to be like a hierarchy of the fastest things on these types of trails. Slow is always the big trucks and the RVs pulling stuff and then is the Jeeps. They usually overtake the trucks and the ATVs and UTVs and top tier dirt bikes and dual sports oh man this is really pretty here I get a surprising amount of questions and emails and stuff from people outside of the US that want to come here and ride I don't know how to do it. Um, I've helped a few uh, to kind of set up and get their bearings. Uh, as far as just giving recommendations, I don't sell a service or anything like that. But uh, if, if you are in Europe or wherever, Australia, um, and you want to ride the US, especially Colorado and Utah, uh, feel free to hit me up. My, my email is posted in the description. I'm always happy to help coordinate, um, kind of give you like some tips. Uh, I can probably recommend some places where you can rent a bike or take a guided tour. That's more of your thing. Times of the years to travel. Uh, a lot of people don't realize how high up Colorado is and how late the season starts. Um, also, like just keep your big ADV bike uh, over there for your trails here. Get something lighter. Um, but yeah, feel free to hit me up. I'm happy to help. Yeah. Just came to a little place a couple miles from my campground location, which they say they have gas. But I'm talking about propane or fuel. <laughs> <laughs> Six dollars per gallon, and it's eighty five. Uh, eighty five is not great for this bike, so yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to keep going for now. The trail is finished. My campground is only a few miles ahead. Uh, Antonito is 22 miles. So, I want to run down to Antonito, get some gas, maybe something to grill, and go from there. And we're coming into Antonito. It's pretty insanely windy out here. I think I must have passed it already too. That's okay. I can drive through here real quick and get a feel for the little town. So, 
day one or one and a half is in the books of the new CDT part two trip. Um, today went from Poncha Springs in Colorado, so just outside of Buena Vista, uh, over Monarch Pass, through Sargent's, right to where I stopped last year. Um, from there, it was nice dirt roads that quickly turned into two track. Um, initially, I was a little concerned about the new luggage, to be honest. It didn't feel nearly as good as it did with the Reckless 80. Um, so I was a little bummed about that, but I figured I'd give it a try, see how it runs. But um, the, the more, it, I mean, even on normal gravel roads, I just didn't have the same amount of control that I did uh, previously. Um, so I've been, I was talking through like, oh, I want to move some luggage around and try new things. And eventually, uh, just before that uh, Highway 149, so on the way towards Lake City, I just stopped for lunch um, at a beautiful little place and decided, I mean, why not move it? It's not going to be that involved. So I shifted the whole backcountry duffel, so the top duffel, forward to, towards my back about four or five inches or so. And it made all the difference in the world. Um, it feels just like the Reckless did, uh, if not better, just because I lost some body weight too. Um, but now I can rip around again. <laughs> the tires are showing the first sign of wear. I probably lost a couple of millimeters since I started in Denver. Um, then from there, it was just normal roads going over passes um, through Crete, which was a really nice little town. Um, that's when <laughs> my mirror started coming loose. Uh, the new double takes. Uh, I was trying to find a hardware store for an 8mm because I thought I didn't have one on me to tighten it down. But uh, So from Crete I just, I just kept going, hardware stores closed. And then eventually, just outside of uh, South Fork, Colorado, uh, it turned into dirt roads again. And really, really fun dirt roads. So fairly fast, high mountain valleys. Uh, the drone was working again. First thing this morning that we tried, the drone just dropped out of the sky after like 20 seconds of flying, but everything was fine. So got some footage out there and then just kept driving through um, along a river, through valleys, seeing a lot of fly fishing, a beautiful area here. Um, so towards Antonito, Colorado, yeah. Um, went past my campground 15 minutes, went into Antonito, got some, got some gas and uh, back to camp camp campground. I uh, got everything set up now. So, uh, making dinner, actually. <laughs> so from here, uh, plan for tomorrow is crossing into New Mexico. Uh, I'm not sure how far I'll go. Um, going just past Chama and then ending, I would assume somewhere around Cuba, but we'll, we'll see. But this campground I have is actually pretty nice. So you can see nobody much around me. I'm just cooking dinner right now, downloading footage. Got the tent set up here, the bike. And so this is the duffel actually that I moved forward. Right now it's flat because all my gear is out of it. So I moved the uh, straps from here to here that difference huge difference um radiators working fine which was a concern last time everything seems to be working fine i found an eight millimeter i cranked down this nut right here so from here should be should be good to go sun is starting to set um got my bear bag ready to go got the line hung up <laughs> And after dinner, I'm gonna clean everything up and get myself some, what am I having? American Buffalo Goulash Coronas. And yeah, hopefully it's gonna be a comfortable night, first night camping. <laughs>